Welcome to the Christian Church on this Saturday afternoon, August 23rd, 2014. I thank God for the crowd that's gathered here today to hear the Word of God. And we're going to hear the Word of God. And the theme for today is a man's home is his ministry. We know that there are many men that are MIA when it comes to family matters. We have men out here that have had kids and they're sprinkled all over the place and they're not being the father they're supposed to be and child support doesn't cut it. Child support doesn't change. It's better than nothing, but it doesn't change you being there for your child to teach your child right from wrong because mm -hmm. the Bible is very serious. God is serious about family and about parenthood. And we can't have strong churches without strong families. Amen. The reason why we see the deterioration that's going on in the body of Christ, where instead of Hollywood, the entertainment capital of the world has now become the average church. Because we bring in celebrities, wow. we bring in people with big titles, and they leave with lots and lots of money from poor people who can't hardly take care of their bills. And then they get angry at God and blame God because somebody told you that the more money you give to the church, the more blessed you'll be with God. You can't buy your way to heaven. Do you understand what I'm saying? Tithes and offerings have nothing to do with salvation. All of those things are created so somebody could get your money that you need to pay your mortgage, to pay your rent, to pay your car payments, to take care of your buying your food, and then you got to wait for God for a miracle while they ride around in luxurious vehicles and live in homes that cost millions of dollars while you're broke. Well, God has raised up the man to be the leader in the home. That doesn't make him better than a woman, but more responsibility and emphasis is put on the man because God created man in his image and he created woman in his image as well, but he took the woman from the man. So that means that woman is to be beside the man and not behind the man because your rib is right on your side. So a strong home is husband and wife walking side by side, the two become one, and they're walking in unity as it comes to spiritual matters as well as physical matters. So we're going to get in 2 Timothy. Paul was trying to school Timothy on what it is to be a minister of the gospel. You don't need a title. I could care less about titles. The only title I need is a Christian. If I'm a Christian, I'm all right. It doesn't matter if the world thinks highly of what I'm doing or not, if they approve of it or agree with it or not. What matters is, is I'm in the will of God, and God has raised me up to teach the word. I'm more of a teacher and a preacher, but I do have a pastor's heart. I care about people. I care about your salvation. And I don't want people to be following after these entertainers just because they got a big name and they draw the crowds doesn't mean that their name is written in the book of life. You understand what I'm saying? Because you can have charisma. A whole lot of folks got charisma and they can charm the skin off a snake, but that won't get you into heaven. Your heart must be right with God. You must be born again. Ye must be born again, says the Bible. So we're going to start at 2 Timothy, and I hope that God uses us. We're going to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, may your spirit give me the power to preach beyond my human abilities, beyond my mental capacity to understand. May the Holy Ghost take control, and may somebody's life be changed by the preaching and teaching of the truth of the Word of God. In Jesus' name, amen. 2 Timothy chapter number 2. Beginning at verse 1, it says, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Notice it says the grace that is in Christ Jesus, not in T.D. Jakes. You understand what I'm saying? Not in Joel Osteen, not in Billy Graham or somebody else, but in Christ Jesus. This is God's house. Amen? Amen. And we are to conduct ourselves properly in the house of God. And the things... That thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit, the, commit thou unto what? Faithful men, not unfaithful men, but faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endured hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that wharf entangle himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who have chosen him 
to be a soldier. So God don't care one bit whether LeBron James went back to Cleveland or not. You understand what I'm saying? The affairs of this world. If you are a Christian, your focus should first be on Jesus Christ. And the only home that I'm looking forward to going to is my home in heaven. Where the Bible says in my house. In my father's house, there are many mansions. You understand? Yeah. The world's mansions and riches and all the riches of these millionaire ball players can't compare to what God has in heaven for you. Because nobody can break in or steal it. Amen? Yeah. And as a soldier, I'm to be focused on the things of God first. Everything else comes secondary Amen. to that. Let's go to verse 5. And if a man also strive for masteries, meaning you want to be in a place of prominence, yet he be not crowned except he strive lawfully. So that means you got to do things according to the rules of God. You can't come up with your own rules of how to get there. That's called self-righteousness. And the Bible lets us know in Isaiah that all our righteousness is as filthy rags. So you can go to church day and night. You can shout, speak in tongues. You can know all the verses in the Bible and still not be right with God if you don't do things according to what his words say. You can't live in sin and then pretend to be righteous and think that's going to fly by at the judgment seat. You understand? God knows all of us. He knows where we are, and he knows where he wants to bring us. Thank God for his mercy, because I would have been lost, as I told y'all last year. I'm growing up thinking I wanted to be a porn star. After watching a porno flick, the only thing I was going to do was embarrass myself. <laughs> I don't bat in their league. You understand what I'm saying? But I don't have to because that's not what God called me to do. Amen. God called me to minister the gospel, have one wife, and not be sleeping with this one and that one. Right. Amen? Yeah. Amen. There's, a, there's a punishment for that. And we want to make sure that we have repented of all of our sin. As I said before, Tyler Perry, some of these other ones are living double lives. If they repent, God can forgive them. But if they don't repent, all their riches and all their money won't do them any good when they stand before God. Take a look at what happened to Whitney Houston. It's a shame. It's sad. But guess what? There were people that knew she had a drug problem, but they could do nothing for her. All her celebrity friends. Nobody could do anything for her in the time when she needed them the most. But all of them probably got her money, you know what I mean? They got close to her so that they could be in with her. But when she needed them the most, only Jesus could set her free. And it's just a tragedy. Her and others, many others, Robin Williams just killed himself, took his own life. All the celebrity and fame and everything that you have is not more important than your soul. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. These people, unfortunately, according to the word, not according to my judgment, but according to the word of God, these people did not make it to heaven. You understand what I'm saying? The Bible says all murderers shall have their part in the lake of fire. That includes if you take your own life unmerited. You understand what I'm saying? It's sad, but it's true. And if somebody don't tell the truth, if the pastors don't stop living their double lives and they don't get out here and preach and teach the truth, notice up here the Bible said commit the gospel to faithful men that will be able to teach others also. That flies in the face of what you're being taught in the average church. They're telling you that in order to minister to somebody, you had to have gone through what they've gone through. Not according to the Bible. Jesus never had a drug problem. Jesus never lived, you know, in sexual sin. Jesus never did any of these things. Yet he's the one that died for us. And it's his word, not ours, that we must go by. And so we get some ministers out here that ain't got all this junk in their closet. You understand what I'm saying? Just recently, we had a, a minister that got a Grammy Award, made a song called My God is Awesome, just got caught on the computer with no clothes on in somebody else's house other than his wife. Now imagine you this man's wife and you click on the computer and go on the Facebook and you see your husband <laughs> butt naked brushing his teeth in another woman's house. Oh, wow. mm -hmm. 
And the man had to stand up in the church and say he had an affair only after he got caught. Eight years. He made a song. He got Grammy Awards. Everybody was singing that song. My God is awesome. You notice I ain't play that song. That's why. Because you can sing a lie. See, if you're not living according to what you're singing, then your lifestyle is a lie. I mean, James Cleveland had some of the most powerful gospel songs there was, but he was gay. He was a bisexual. Yes, he was. And if he didn't repent, he didn't get into heaven. I don't care if he said Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to me. Repenting from your sins would be the best thing that ever happened to you. And it's Jesus' blood that will cleanse you. Man. But there's so many entertainers that are living double lives, got drug problems. Mighty clouds of joy, drunk as, drunk as a skunk. And would come into church and sing some of the most beautiful songs, have everybody shouting. And they in two-thirds in the wind. You understand what I'm saying? The Bible says, the same commit the gospel to faithful men. Where are the faithful men? That's why the churches are full of women. There's more women than men. And now women are having to take the responsibility of pastoring and all these things that God had set in place for spiritual men, men that were following him, that would be in a place to leave. But I said this last Sunday, a man that is not in a place with God is not qualified to lead. A woman whose heart is on fire for Jesus can lead a crowd a whole lot better than an adulterous man. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Let's skip down because I don't have time to get into everything. But in verse 15, it says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You understand? You have to study to show yourself approved unto God, not study to show yourself approved unto the bishop or the apostles. Just because you got a master's degree in divinity, that don't mean nothing. If God hasn't approved of you, you're all your preaching and teaching will be in vain. But if God has called you, it doesn't matter if you're in a little setting like this. It doesn't matter if the person is speaking to you doesn't have very high status as the world would call high. If God has called me and approved me, he's the only one I have to worry about because he's the one that's going to give me that reward if I stay faithful preaching to two people or six people or 6,000 people. You understand? If I can't preach the gospel passionately here, but if I get into a stadium, I get on fire for God, that makes me a hypocrite because if I can preach it passionately there, I can preach it with passion right here. And the devil hates that. One thing the devil hates is somebody that's full of the word of God that he can't deceive mm -hmm. you know and all of us can be Bible scholars if you're willing to pay the price because see you might have to turn your plate down you might have to give up some things while all your friends is having fun and you in the house studying the Bible and they laughing at you but just like in the days of Noah Remember when Noah was building that ark? It had never rained. They laughed at him. They mocked him and made fun of him. But a funny thing happened. One day it rained. And when it rained, all the people that were saved were in the ark. And God shut the door. And what God shuts, no man can open. And what God opens, no man can shut. So if God opens a door for me, I will let him do it. In the meantime, I will be faithful to preach this gospel. I will study to show myself approved unto God. You understand what I'm saying? Let's skip down. Verse 20 says, but in a great house... There are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. That means in a house, you got your very, very precious and delicate, you know, silver. Some people have china and glasses that they consider to be de very delicate. And they're fragile. They don't want you to break them. Understand what I'm saying? But then also in the house, you also have a toilet. You also have a garbage can. So there are vessels of honor in here, and there are some vessels of dishonor in here. You understand? Some things are to be ate out of. Some things are to be pooped in. God says if you don't get right with, with him, you're going to be as a vessel of dishonor. You understand? If you mess around and lose your soul, there's no party in hell. 
There's no sex, drugs, and rock and roll in hell. The only thing that's in hell is people screaming and being tormented day and night by fire and by other things. And I don't like fire. I don't know about you. But I don't want nobody setting me on fire, and I certainly don't want to get burnt. Amen? Amen. Amen. But yet we live our lives. We say we don't want to go to hell. But when God takes a look at our life, and we know that our life is not right with him, are we more concerned about how long the service goes? Or are we more concerned about eternity? Because I guarantee you, I can't preach longer than eternity is. And I'm saying this in love because I love each and every one of you. We must repent of our sins because we've all sinned. Done something. I haven't done everything, but I did some stuff I had no business doing. And the fact is, I had to come to Jesus receive his grace, his mercy, and his deliverance, and now I'm in a place to teach others because I'm not cheating on my wife. I'm not running around and doing the things that the devil wants you to do to destroy your soul. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. There are sexually transmitted diseases. There's all kinds of traps. People that get addicted to drugs that cannot even help themselves. They'll do anything for a fix. They'll rob their own family members. They'll even you know, do terrible things to you to get your money. God didn't put us here to live like that. God put us here to bring glory to him. And the only way we bring glory to him is if we humble ourselves under his hand. This chapter is almost over. Verse 22 we're going to go to. It says, flee also you for lust. You for lust, kids, is any trap that the devil is set for you, whether it's Facebook or Instagram, where you can get on there and meet up with people that might be, they might be molesters. They might be rapists and murderers, but you got them as friends on your Facebook and your Instagram. That is dangerous. You are playing with fire. You understand what I'm saying? These girls out here, these young girls are faster than a monster mall track up at the Dover Speedway. You gotta be careful. Because they'll trap you with a baby. They will trap you, you know, with sexually transmitted diseases. And if you've never been in a clinic and had to get a needle where you don't want one, I guarantee you, if it ever happens, you'll learn and you'll remember what the Bible said. Flee you for lust, but follow after righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on God, you know, them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. The Bible says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. It doesn't matter what my mouth says, my heart must be right with God in order for me to be welcomed into his kingdom. Verse 23, but foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strife, and the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach patient in meekness instructing those that oppose themselves if God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth and that they may recover themselves that means deliverance recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will so when you disobey God don't you understand there's a place where the devil can come in take you captive and you won't even have the ability to get out of what it is you're in that's what happens with drugs if you don't get out of drugs and get delivered you it will take you down 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 mm -hmm. until finally you end up like Whitney Houston you understand it's sad but we can learn from that we can learn that we're not to play with sin because sin will take you further than you want to go. It'll keep you longer than you want to stay, and it'll cost you more than you want to pay. Amen? Amen. But Amen. the remedy for sin, if we confess our sins, 1 John 1 and 9 says, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So then when God cleanses you, now you got a real testimony. See, the testimony is when God cleansed you. The testimony is not you falling down and getting up. The testimony is I fell down, but God picked me up because I couldn't pick myself up. Yeah. 
That's why you can't listen to every song. Every song may sound good, but it's not a song if it don't line up with the Bible and they can use scriptures. See, the Bible says a just man falleth. That's not talking about you falling into sin. 